So the last time we, we were talking, you talked about the initial phase or initial aspect of the life of the church. Families coming in and leaving. And how that had happened a few times. Was there a time when you began to feel, feel as though families are coming in and staying? And if so, was there anything changed in that? Or was it just that the, the season of that initial testing was over? Or do you have a time frame in terms of when people began to come and stay more and what potentially was the reason for that? Yeah, 2017 seemed to be a kind of a turning point for us. If I back up to 2010, one of the things that also began was Gillespie Academy, which is an academy for young people just graduating high school, maybe preparing for university or just getting some life found kind of biblical, theological, even rhetorical and philosophical foundation school. It's a one-year program. And it was organized by Jeff Kingswood and Brian Murray. Jeff Kingswood's Matt Kingswood's brother. And the ARP Church at Woodstock. And that began in, in 2010. And they asked me to be a part of that. And so I, I took on some of those um, responsibilities there. Part of the reason is so that we could become put on the map, as it were, you know, in the eye of the broader church. I understand. Because just when you're, you know, a Reformed Presbyterian church, small congregation, you're in Kitchener, and then you have all these other Reformed churches, United Reformed churches and the ARP churches, some OPC churches, but they don't really see us here. So yeah. Gillespie Academy was really helpful in terms of all of these young people coming from all these different churches. And then one of the teachers there is from the Reformed Presbyterian Church in Kitchener. And that has been very helpful because I also was thinking in terms of long term, all of these young people who are now familiar with the Reformed Presbyterian Church, who went to Gillespie Academy, and you know, and we're 11 years in, that they know about that and what will that do for the future development of the, of the church. Good strategic thinking. That's, the, that's what was behind it anyway. So in 2017, we is when the, the congregation, the Lord really began to add to that. And it just came as a phone call out of the blue from a, a, a man who said, do you have time to answer? I don't know, he had like five questions or, or something. And I said, sure. And I don't remember the questions specifically, but they, they were standard questions, you know, how, how does one be saved? What about women elders in the church? Should they be that? What's your stance on Israel? Mm. Um, and so I just, you know, straightforward said what I thought. And, uh, and then at the end of that, I said, would you like to get together and meet tomorrow at Tim Hortons? And so we did. And uh, this was, a uh, lovely man who's part of the congregation now and uh, brought his family in and then other families and they came from kind of a, well, they had moved from a charismatic situation kind of into the wilderness on their own and kind of had to do a whole reboot of their Christian faith in terms of their, their doctrine. And so that was the thing. And that's when he finally, after I think it was a year or two, kind of alone in the wilderness trying to lead his family, called me, and then um, I guess he was happy with the answers, and then we went from there. And so he organized a Bible study in his home, and then maybe you've experienced this as well. When you get people coming from doctrinal depravity in terms of uh, famine, <laughs> And then they're just they're just hungry for it, and then they tell all their friends, and they bring people, and so you, it's like you, almost you don't have to do any of the work, you know. They just keep coming, you know, and and that's what happened. And so they came, and uh, they and, and stayed, and then through them, more people were coming, and then that was 2017, and then 2018 January is when we began meeting at this United Church building, and when that took place. Then it seemed, again, when people would come, 
again, I, I, there must be something psychological to it, just that a, a visitor comes and it doesn't look like this thing's going to fall apart. You know, it seems like this has some stability to it and some roots. And so they come and then they, and they stay. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, as you said in the previous interview, you think that a gym is a good idea or a school hall is a good idea because it's neutral. But there is a transitory aspect to that. People who have a sense of, of church, whatever that view of church is, they have a picture in their head that's a building. And we know it's not the building, but that can help, as you say, bring a, a sense of solidity to it. They walk in and yeah, this is what a church should be, looking at the structure. Mm -hmm. and the more They settle more. That is an important point. 2018 and 2019 in particular, I think 2019 was a, was a, a year of, of great growth as well. We had Matt Filbert has, um, sets up these short term missions. And so whenever he asks, you know, would you like to do that? I always say yes. And like many things I say yes. And then, and then I, I, what am I going to do? You know? <laughs> So in 2019, we had Jordan King come and visit, and I had just an, such an enjoyable time with Jordan. But the main thing that we did, which is something you've done prior to that, you know, like you hand out a lot of flyers, just going through neighborhoods and advertising about the flyers, you know, and that's just something that you, I think you just do as a church planter. You have to just, and that's just long. But when Jordan came, and since we were just starting at this church building, I wanted to let people all in the neighborhood of this church building where we're, that we're renting to know that we're there. But rather than flyers, use business cards, my business card. Standard information on the front and then on the back, the worship time and address and a few points on it. I should have a card on me, but I don't think I even have one on me. So, no, I don't even have one. See, isn't that ridiculous? On the back of it, though, had I had one, it says something about like three points, like one of them. And one of them is um, reverent traditional worship or something like that. I think it is reverent traditional worship or something. sound Bible exegesis, you know, in a loving community or something like that. But, and I, you know, what's going to be the success rate? Never had any kind of quote unquote follow up from flyers and so on. But this time, all kinds of people were coming. It was almost like every Lord's Day, someone new from the neighborhood was coming. And some of them have even continued and, and stayed. So I don't know what that, I mean, it's not the thing itself. It's not the program itself. It's just when the Lord blesses that. The Lord turns it. Yeah, that's right. You go through that testing season. <clears throat> Are you prepared to do all the walking in the streets? Because we did that in Airdrie. Twice a year, you were about 15,000 leaflets around all the houses in Airdrie. Yep. Likewise, very few people would 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 come in through a direct result of that yeah and yet people would come in in other ways so yeah that's right as the lord was saying you labor and i'll build my church yeah yeah that's it absolutely well that's that's interesting again next time uh, we'll talk about one final thing and that's rp church of canada